remember what the haters talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? A Georgia woman who recently reported her husband, a local police officer for domestic violence, was found dead in her home on Monday. Her husband claims that it was a suicide. Police are still investigating. Deputies found 44-year-old Amanda Perot dead in her Eatonton, Georgia home on Monday afternoon. The woman's husband, Eatonton County Police Officer Michael Perot, was there at the time of her death but did not call 911. Instead, the officer called the Eatonton Police Chief to say that his wife had taken her own life. He said that they had been arguing when she picked up a gun, put it to her head, and boom. Y'all believe that? It appears that they're really trying to sell this thing in terms of making it look like they're serious about investigating one of their own because they called in the Georgia Bureau of Investigations. They said that they it appears that there was a single gunshot wound to the head. They didn't see any other bruises. But the week prior to that, when Amanda called the police on him to scoop him up for beating on her, she said that he pushed her where he shoved her out of the front door of their house after striking her. And she said he did this in front of her eight-year-old daughter who witnessed it all. Now, the thing is, dude, when he was arrested, they gave him a $1,500 bond and they let him go home. He went right back to the residence. Now, Amanda's mother said that he had nowhere else to go and Amanda... I guess felt sorry for him and she let him back in the house. And less than a week later, Amanda is dead. Now, Amanda appeared to be taking some steps to let people know what was going on in her life. She had a friend that she was texting messages to. She had copied text messages and uh, uh, messages on social media. She was basically leaving a trail for the murderer, you know, catching up to catch the murderer. Uh, so she was clearly in fear of her life. She feared this dude. And so she tried to keep documents of her text messages and other communications. And she gave those to her friend for safekeeping. Her mother said that she witnessed the cop dragging her across the pavement before. This is the type of stuff that I can't get with. Like, if I know you getting down like that on my people, I think it's important to not take any risk. You know, like, don't take any chances. Like, if I can't, like, if you're doing that type of stuff to my people, then you can't be trusted. I can't trust you to, to protect them and look after them. I can't trust that you won't do it again. So, I think the I think the safe thing to do is to is to completely stop the threat. This is why it's important for women, females, to stay close to the men in your life who really love you, who just love you for you and ain't trying to get nothing romantic out of you. I'm talking about family, like perhaps even close, 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 close family, friends that were, who are well trusted and proven. You dig? Because a lot of these dudes who are violent, um, they prey on females who don't have close relationships with strong men in their family. They prey on that. And police officers are some of the biggest bullies in the world. Think about what I'm saying, family. Let's say you're a police officer. You don't like somebody. You push them around. They file a complaint. Guess where they go to file the complaint? 
it goes straight to the police department and tap one of your buddies to file a complaint against you. What do you think happens to a lot of those complaints? They go straight to the trash. It's a joke. We have investigated our buddy and we have found no wrongdoing. Imagine if you were in a game and you went out and robbed somebody or beat somebody up or shot and killed somebody, stabbed somebody, and the person went to report you to the gang leader. <laughs> that is basically what's happening in cities and towns all across America. You got criminals and badges with badges and guns and uniforms investigating themselves. Remember Drew Peterson, the ex-cop who wife was afraid of him? When she spoke out about it, she came up missing. And once they started digging, they found out that he had another wife who had died under suspicious circumstances. And they finally put it together and they hit him up with that murder also. But had he not continued on and killed his second wife, they would have never found out about the first wife getting killed. So a lot of these cops operate with impunity because their buddies are protecting them. That so-called thin line, that thin blue line is getting wider by the moment. So I would tell any woman to stay away from cops. I mean, you got to be careful with any kind of dude anyway. You got to really, really do your homework because some of these dudes ain't rap too tight. And I get it, fellas. Some women ain't rap too tight either. I get it. But we're talking about dudes right now. Some of these dudes ain't rap too tight. And it's, it goes to like 100 levels higher when it's a police officer somebody who is used to getting away with violating people, somebody who is used to stretching his authority, someone who has a chip on his shoulder the size of a boulder, can't stand being challenged, can't stand being rejected. These dudes are very, very dangerous. Police officers are involved in massive amounts of domestic violence, abuse of power, and criminal behavior. You know why? Because the police department hires from the population, not another planet. So when you see a police officer engaged in bad behavior, it is him being a reflection of the society from which he's hired from. No more talk. What the ladies talking about?